Okay, everybody, now we're going to go through 2-9b. This problem is where we really start getting into accounting and documenting transactions. In the textbook, they give us a list of transactions, letters A through G. What we have to do is we have to put them in the correct accounts. Since we use the double entry method of accounting, each transaction is going to affect at least two accounts. On letters B and D, you're actually going to use three different, different accounts. But let's start with A, you're investing money in the business. And so, so we're investing 15,000 in the business. When we invest money in the business, we're going to increase our cash account. And we're also going to increase our capital account. If you notice, this is where the accounting equation comes into effect. So there is the equal sign. So whenever we enter a transaction, we have to make sure that both sides stay balanced. So you're going to enter your transaction amounts in the non-shaded areas. And you're going to keep a running balance, which just means that you're going to balance after each transaction in the other accounts. So there is letter A. Now B, we bought office supplies for $3,800. So we're going to take this little by little. We're going to enter in office supplies for $3,800. We paid $1,800 in cash, so we're going to decrease our cash balance by $1,800. And we put $2,000 on account. Since we purchased it, it's in accounts payable. Okay, now we have to make sure we do our balancing. And it's easier to do this as you go than try to wait till the end. So we have 15,000 minus 1,800, which is going to give us 13,200. And then we have 3,800 in supplies, 2,000 in accounts payable. and 15,000 in capital. The next transaction, we paid one year of insurance premium. On transactions, if it does not say on account, you're on, like it does in letter B, you're gonna automatically assume that you're going to use cash. So we're going to have $1,000 in cash. and then $1,000 in prepaid insurance. I'm just going to double check the amount. Okay, and let's do the math. I would always recommend using a calculator of some sort so you don't make mistakes as easily. So we're going to have 12,200. 3,800, 1,000, 2,000, and 15,000. So the next transaction, we earned revenues uh, amounting to $2,700. So we're going to go ahead and put that in our revenue account. We were paid 1,700 in cash. So we're going to increase our cash balance. And then 1,000 was put on account. Since somebody is buying it from us, it is going to be an accounts receivable. So if you look at this transaction, we have $2,700 on one side of the transaction of the equation and then we have 2700 on the other side so it shows that we're staying in balance so let's do the math so we're going to add 
1700, which gives us 13,900. 1000. Okay, we are almost through with our transactions. Let's go to letter E. We paid cash on account to the company that supplied our office supplies. So we're paying $1,800 of what we owe, of the 2000 that we owe. So we're going to decrease our cash balance by 1800 We are not going to decrease our office supplies because we haven't used any of those office supplies yet. We're going to be paying down our accounts payable. We're showing that we're paying off a debt that we own. So we're going to take the one thirteen thousand nine hundred, subtract eighteen hundred, which gives us twelve thousand one hundred. We still have a thousand dollars in accounts receivable. We still have our full office supplies. Now we have 2,000 minus 1,800, which gives us our $200. And then we're just going to keep on going. Two more transactions. We paid our office rent for the month of 650. Since it doesn't say on account, we're going to assume that it goes, that we're decreasing our cash balance. And then rent is an expense. So we're going to show that in our expense account. And then we're going to do the math again. Gives us 11,450. And again, we're just going to keep on doing our balance all the way across. Okay, in the last transaction, we withdrew cash for personal use of $150. So we're going to decrease our cash balance again. Then we're going to show it as a drawing account. We're showing that the owner is taking money out of the account. So the, money, the owner is withdrawing money from the business. So it's essentially like giving them a paycheck. So we're going to subtract. That gives us $11,300. And then all the balances are still going to remain the same. So we're just going to go all the way across. And then once we get done, we have to show that we did everything correctly, which is in the boxes below. One thing I will warn you of is a lot of students do not include the last balance. This last balance is required. So now we have to prove that everything equals each other. So we're going to use the ending balance amount, so 11,300, 1,000, 3,800, and 1,000. So our total assets is 17,100. Now we're going to have to use the, the liabilities in the owner's equity. So we have 200, 1,500, 150, 2,700, and 650. If you just added these numbers up, they would be incorrect because you have to subtract depending on the type of account it is. If you look up here at the top, 
it'll show you exactly what you need to add and what you need to subtract. So I'm going to highlight those in green. So that's going to show you. So the 150 is going to be a negative 150. And then we're going to subtract out our expenses. So we're going to break out the calculator again. So we have 200 plus 15,000 minus 150 plus 2,700 minus 650. And that gives us a balance of 17,100. 